All right, let's get the images up here. Let's get going with the news. <clears throat> what a beautiful image to start the day with. Am I wrong? Unfortunately, the news story that goes along with it is far more depressing. The Trump administration, and these are the kind of things we're looking for. You know he's going to do this kind of stuff between now and if he loses. God, please, if he loses between now and January 21st. that These are the kind of things that Trump is going to be doing. So stay tuned. Remember, there's still time to vote. <laughs> uh, and if he gets elected, he'll probably be doing far worse. Anyway, the Trump administration is finalizing a plan to gut protections for the nation's largest national forest, Alaska's Tongass, which could lead to irreparable ecological destruction and damage. The change is at total odds with public opinion, by the way. And hey, these guys, especially the Proud Boy guys, of which I would say Trump is the leader, they actually don't believe in democracy, as we heard from David Nywert on our program yesterday. They don't care about public opinion. 9.3 million acres of wild public lands, which are home, by the way, to the planet's largest intact temperate rainforest, are exempt from the Clinton-era roadless rule, which prevented industrial activity. That's what he's going to do. According to Dr. Amy Moes, Greenpeace USA senior forest campaigner, destructive development in the country's largest national forest, such as extractive logging and expansive road building will be catastrophic for generations to come. Uh, both obviously increasing pollution and curbing our natural ability to minimize its impacts. You can call your senators in Congress today and demand they once again codify the Roadless Area Conservation Act and reverse this reckless decision. Guess what I did for you? I think you're going to like this. I, I I put on a, well, Messiah put on a tab, the Capitol switchboard. So you can just go call. You can call 202-224-3121. And you can say, I, I would like to talk to my congressperson, my senator, my House of Representatives person, and basically demand that they codify the Roadless Area Conservation Act. That would stop this. They can reverse his reckless decision. Um, if you don't know who your congressperson is, which is totally fine, they change all the time. Uh, you can go to contactingcongress.org, contactingcongress.org. So it's good, you know, bad news, but you can also go do something about it, which is hopefully what we're helping you to do, to know how to do on our program here on ACT TV. A coalition of liberal activists in Arizona created this giant sign to blame President Trump for the number of COVID-19 deaths in the U.S. and project their message on the side of a mountain. Pretty cool, right? Messages include uh, COVID deaths, a COVID death count. 22,401 is the number they had at the time that they were projecting. I'm sure it's up by then. Trump failed us. Uh, those were projected in both English and Spanish on Camelback Mountain in Phoenix. The sign was part of an effort by the groups Progress Arizona, Our Voice, Our Vote, Arizona, Lucha, Mia Familia Vota, and Por Nuestras Familias PAC. Trump won Arizona by only four points in 2016, but polls show him lagging behind Joe Biden heading into this election. So there's some good news on the Arizona front. Mass demonstrations are taking place on the streets uh, of Philly this week as demands for justice continue to grow in the wake of the police killing of Walter Wallace Jr. Wallace, a 27-year-old black man, was shot by city officers uh, at least 10 times earlier this week as he suffered from a mental health crisis and Police were called, and obviously they don't know what to do in these situations, so they just kill people, apparently. As many as 2,000 people poured into the streets and marched near the site of Wallace's killing in West Philadelphia. Uh, this was Tuesday night. Demonstrators were chant. Oops, excuse me. Uh, demonstrators were chanting. This is our next story here. Demonstrators were chanting, uh, no, who killed Walter Wallace and no justice, no peace, no racist police. Earlier this week, Philadelphia District Attorney Larry Krasner said his office is reviewing evidence from the incident and weighing whether to bring charges. It's the same old talk. Oh, boy. 
Um, you can contact Krasner and demand that the officers be held accountable. You can email justice at philly.gov, justice at philly.gov, or call 215-686-8000. Again, 215-686-8000. Uh, you know, additionally, in that image of Katie Porter, we recently reported on a proposal by Katie Porter where House Dems would fund mental health first responders in order to stop and reduce police violence like what we saw happen in Philly. Four other Democratic lawmakers introduced a bill, I believe it was last week, aimed at reducing violence against people with mental illness by supporting the creation of special units that would be dispatched instead of police to respond to mental health crises. People, police are not trained to respond to mental health crises. And all they know how to do is police and shoot and maybe de-escalate, but not in the case of mental health issues. They require a very specialized approach and treatment, which police are neither trained to do nor necessarily have the temperament to do so, given the fact that policing is their job and not mental health care. Anyway, according to the Treatment Advocacy Center, at least a quarter and perhaps as many as half of all fatal police encounters involve people who suffer from mental illness. There are, they are 16 times more likely to be killed by law enforcement officers than other people. The bill would create a grant program to hire, to fund the hiring, training, salaries, and benefits of mental health first responder units that would be deployed following relevant 911 calls. The measure is co-sponsored by 25 Democratic lawmakers. Hey, you can call your representative. Look at that capital switchboard right there and tell them you support the Mental Health Justice Act. And while you are calling them to tell them you support the Mental Health Justice Act, don't forget to tell them uh, that you uh, also want to recodify the Roadless Area Conservation Act so that, you know, we can reverse Trump's decision to build some roads, which then, of course, leads to logging in the biggest forest that we have here in the United States that has been protective since, um, you know, the uh, the mammoths were walking through it. Hi. The Federal Bureau of Economic Analysis is set to release third quarter economic growth estimates today, and experts are sounding the alarm about President Donald Trump's election minded efforts to portray these deceptive numbers as proof that the economy is roaring back under his leadership, even though the numbers, by, by the way have not yet officially been released, the Trump re-election campaign is already running Facebook ads touting the fastest GDP growth in history and celebrating the great American comeback from the crash that happened under Trump that they are clearly not mentioning. Ah. Anyway, Dean Baker, the senior economist at the Center for Economic Policy Research and Act TV regular guest noted Tuesday that the economy would have to grow at a 53.3% annual rate in the third quarter to make up the ground lost in the first and second quarters. Economist Robert Rice responded saying Trump will claim credit. Don't be fooled. It follows one of the sharpest drops in American history, in all of history, actually, and the growth hasn't lasted. Latest indicators show a big loss of momentum. I don't know how anyone would believe this. I mean, people are living uh, through this. Our guest is here, Ashanti Golar, giving one more second and we'll be right with her. Don't forget to watch that interview if you're watching on YouTube, because this clip will be separate from that clip. Uh, and that one comes out a little bit later than this clip. Anyway, in our Final story today, Bernie Sanders and Amy Klobuchar released a joint statement Wednesday in response to Donald Trump's false suggestion that counting votes after Election Day is unlawful. Uh, they wrote, in America, we count the votes to determine who wins an election. Absentee ballots counted after Election Day do not flip the results of an election, as Justice Kavanaugh claimed. They are the results of the election. As of Wednesday, an estimated 57 million Americans had already voted, according to Michael McDonald, a pol political science professor at the University of Florida who runs the U.S. Elections Project. The number of ballots cast early by mail or in person this year so far exceeds 50 percent of the number of votes cast in 2016's presidential election. Thanks for watching. I'm Juliana Forlano. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, you know, we're going to be bringing you the information that you need all through next week. 
We are live on Facebook and on Twitch. So if you're watching on YouTube, but you want to see this live 10 a.m. Eastern time on Facebook and Twitch at ActTV. Follow ActTV on all its platforms. You know the drill. I say this pretty much in every segment. And thank you very much to the 40,000 plus new viewers we just recently got on our YouTube page.